And it's called the 33% rule. And it's for the parents, any grandparents in the room that are here to support their granddaughters. And it's for every student athlete in this room. And I hope you always remember it. When you go to high school, you graduate, go to college, graduate, and you get a job or you become a full-time mom or whatever you do, I want you to always remember the 33% rule. And it goes something like this. There are a third of the people in your social circle, in your athletic circle, in your academic circle, that are gonna suck the life out of you. <laughs> They're gonna just suck the life out of you. They could be your people at work. They could be the people at school. They could be the person that you just beat out to get here. They are bottom third and they will suck the life out of you. It's the people in your life that can't celebrate your success. It's the people in your life that will tear you down because you're getting it done academically and you're getting it done athletically and you're taking care of your family. Bottom third, she sounds something like this in the fifth inning. Oh, I can't believe it's 102 degrees and I have my compression shirt on. <laughs> look, look at, look. There it is. I can't stand it. And look at, oh my gosh, we're losing. We're down by four. We're never going to come back. Oh, my shoes are killing me. Do you have a Band-Aid? I don't even know if I can finish. They're bottom third. They're the people in the world that literally, the minute you get a little bit of a pushback, they are the first ones that just start barfing. They're barfing. And I ask you right now, you may not even realize it. You may be going, hey, I think I'm a barfer. <laughs> Trust me, you keep your hands inside, you can hit the curveball, you can swing at strikes, you can hustle, you can go ahead and do the forehand, backhand, you have instinct on the bases, you got a little bit of speed or savvy. Now remember, if you don't have speed, when they ask, you say, oh, please believe I have savvy though. Because savvy base running is just as important as that girl that can fly, right? So if you're not the quickest on the team, please believe, you use your instincts, be savvy, anticipate. When I played softball, I was 175 pounds. I played center field. And I left my career and people always said she was so quick for her size. I really wasn't. I cheated. And I'll tell you how I cheated. I worked so hard on watching the release point of the pitcher to pick up the angle as early as possible to know middle in or middle out, and I started moving in that direction before the ball was hit. And that gave me a very, very quick first step. Now, girls will ask me, well, what happens if the girl somehow hooked that outside pitch and it went to left center? It happened, but the majority of the time, it didn't. So you compensate with what you don't have. You compensate. You don't complain about it, you compensate. Bottom third, never got that memo. From this day forward, you know B3s. You recognize them and don't let them permeate your armor. Cause you're a champion. I congratulate you for being a champion in your life. You're getting it done in school. You're getting it done on the ball field. You're taking care of your family. And then you gotta be aware of the middle third. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. She wants to be a strong girl. And when we're winning, she's loving life. She loves her teammates. She loves her assistant coaches. She loves the coaches. She loves the park. She loves the town. She loves the city. She loves her life. But the minute she gets yanked from the game and she's now a rotator, she doesn't play every day, she's now becoming bottom third. So middle third has the capability of being on top and being positive, but the first time adversity strikes, bam, she becomes bottom third. So ask yourself, am I that person that's kind of good, I'm positive, I'm in when everything's going my way? And then the minute I have a little bit of adversity, I crumble. Middle third, that's also word scramble for mediocre, mediocre. I believe not a person in this room is mediocre. There's just over a hundred of you, hundreds 
of thousands of players to pick from. And we picked you. From this day forward, there is nothing mediocre about you. And when you look in that mirror and you see that person, I'm asking you to say three positive things about yourself because there is nothing mediocre about you. There is not one thing mediocre about you. There are just over 100 people, 110 I believe, in this room of every single state in the country. We scoured the country, Adidas did, and we've got 100 in this room. There is nothing mediocre about you. I don't care if you ever hit another pitch again in your life. There is nothing mediocre about you. Perfect. So let's talk about top third. Let's talk about top 1%, because that's this room. That's you. The good news is you're top 1%. You're top third. That's the good news. You know what the tough news is and the bad news is about that? You have a responsibility being a champion. I don't mean a ring on the finger. You may say, well, Coach, we haven't won the championship yet. I'm talking about a champion from the inside out that you worked extremely hard to get to this point, that you're getting it done in the classroom and you're taking care of your family. That's a champion for life. And you hang on to that because you can give that to yourself each and every day, whether your supporters are there or not. Hey, guess what? When you wake up tomorrow and you hug your family goodbye, you go out there and you go on the field, I want you to take a gut check and say, am I gonna be B3? Am I going to be middle third or am I going to be top third? And I know that you're all going to say, I'm going to be top 1% from this day forward. You only have to be aware of one thing. What comes out of your hole? What comes out of your hole? Positive or poison? There is no in-between. There is no in-between. It is either positive or poison. It's either positive or negative. There is no in-between. That's awesome, because that's simple. I get that. I graduated from high school. My academic counselor told me I'd never make it at UCLA. Who, who's, first of all, who says that? <laughs> but you remember that. When anybody tells you, you you're too short, you're too little, you're too big, you're too dumb, you're too smart, don't let anybody tell you anything regarding that that I, w I didn't have the aptitude. Okay, what does that mean, first of all? <laughs> I don't have the aptitude? Oh, please believe. And my mom was right there. She heard the whole thing. She couldn't wait. The day I graduated, she grabbed that certificate, she copied it, and marched down to San Clemente High School and gave it to the academic counselor. And she said one word, wrong. <laughs> and you remember that. You remember that. You remember my voice. You remember my face. You can do all of it. You can go into your games, play your best softball, have opportunities come to you. But the one thing that you have complete and total control over, not what everybody else thinks, is what you think about when you look in that mirror. And I'm here to stop you to say, take your inventory. You've worked your tail off. You've earned the right to be confident. You've earned the right to be confident. I tell my Bruins all the time, you earned the right to have a little swagger. You earned it. Have it. It's yours. You earned that right. You come early. You stay late. You miss dances. You miss weekend parties. You took the hits. You missed out on social opportunities. You've earned the right to say, I can do this. But more importantly, I want you to just have fun. Because the game will take care of you. So you've got the rule down. B3, middle third, top third. You're going to be top third from this day forward. And most importantly, you